If you had a pet, what do you think the name of your pet's childhood pet would be? <laughs> Friends and lovers, welcome to the Gympressions for a hat in time. Long overdue, Gympressions, some might say, but I always say, a Gympressions is neither late nor early, it always arrives exactly when I mean it to, unless it goes up late. They're never early. They always go up late if they're gonna go up at all. But anyway, a hat in time, it's all right. Yeah, that's okay. Obviously, a lot of people want me to play this game. There are a lot of people saying, Jim, when are you gonna check out a hat in time? Jim, you gotta check out a hat in time. If you like Super Mario Odyssey, you're gonna love a hat in time. If you were disappointed by ukulele, you should check out a hat in time, 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 a hat in time. And it's, it's okay. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, it is clearly rough around the edges. Uh, the controls are a little bit, mm, let's call them loose. Let's say they're a little bit loose. They're not, they're not, they're not tight. Well, I mean, obviously I just said they're loose. That's the opposite of tight, I think. Yeah, that's how words work. Anyway, um, it is difficult to play this after Super Mario Odyssey, which is what I've done. Uh, that doesn't help it. Uh, when it came out earlier, had I played it sooner, I might have been a little bit more. If I'd have played this right after Ukulele, I'd have probably said, this is fucking brilliant, mate, just through sheer basis of comparison, innit? But by the same token, you play it after Super Mario Odyssey and you're a little bit, eh. But I won't keep talking about Super Mario Odyssey because some people seem to think that I have actual physical sex with it, uh, which I don't. Uh, not that I think there's a problem with that. If you want to have physical, sexual intercourse with your copy of Super Mario Odyssey, go right ahead. But we're talking about a hat in time, so grow up. Get a bit mature, yeah? Like, the mafia here saw a spaceship. Uh, this is a result of having slipped in mud puddles, which I found very annoying up till this point, and then I thought, oh, actually, that's quite clever. Uh, that's how I feel about quite a few of the mechanics I've seen in this game. Um, the stealth being one example, there are some stealth levels and initially I'm thinking, well this is a little bit bollocks. Um, it's very bare bones simplistic stealth and it's annoying me. But it is used to create a very memorable level, I'll have a little bit of that level in this video. Uh, but very memorable, <laughs> indeed. You know, well, I'll just power through that. Very memorable level indeed. Um, those moments where there are levels designed purely for a purpose, a level designed purely for stealth, a level designed purely for platforming, uh, that's when A Hat in Time is at its best. When A Hat in Time is actually trying to be that platformy collectathon, you know, we're better than ukulele kind of game, I feel it's at its weakest. At levels like this, these big open levels that you keep returning to in order to collect hourglasses, um, so far, and, and bear in mind, you know, these are first first impressions, I might have some later down my line if my, uh, my thoughts evolve, but uh, so far my experiences with the more open levels where you're running around collecting lots of little things uh, feel like the weaker element. Uh, it's when a hat in time is, oh, there's my phone going off, I really should silence that before. I'm going to power through it again because I'm a professional. I'm not professional enough to get my words right or mute my phone but I'm professional enough to keep talking through them. Um, I would say it would be more professional to uh, just do another take of that, but I'm raw and animalistic, <laughs> and that's what you get out of me. Um, anyway, here's an example of what I'm talking about. So this is like a time rift to these uh, bonus levels, basically, um, and you can get some extra little uh, hourglasses. They got, you know, fancier names than that, but uh, again, animalistic, raw, acoustic. That's what we're, we're like here. And that's me second guessing myself. It's one of my problems with platform games. Um, I say it's one of my personal problems because it's not a problem with the platforming genre. It's a personal issue where I lack self-confidence in, uh, in my judgment with games sometimes. Uh, so making certain jumps, I tend to do what I did there and waste a lot of time. But anyway, back to my main point, which was this is, uh, very platforming focused and I enjoy it more than the open stuff. Uh, this is, it's just something to think about and they're clearly 
well crafted. They've had thought put into them. Um, you know, there's some light puzzle solving here as we use different hats and as you see as I miss. Um, you wear different hats, of course. They give you different powers. There's one for sprinting, one here for making magic potions. Uh, there's an ice hat that you get after this that turns you into a statue of ice that can bounce off certain springboards. Uh, lots of cool hats. Um, and just uh, when the, as I say, when the levels are focused, they're really good. I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, and a lot of fun with Murder on the Owl Express, which we'll be looking at next. Um, whenever the game knows exactly what it wants to do, I have a great deal of fun with it. When it's sort of, you know, here's an open world, have fun with it. Here, I'm just really fucking this up. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Parkour, parkour. Um, I have less fun with those more open worlds, basically. And, and a lot more fun when it's streamlined and laser focused on one idea. Uh, but other than that, like I said, it's not blown my mind. It's not something that I'm rushing to keep playing. But I am enjoying it. And it has been fun. And the more I play it, the more I enjoy it. And I really wish I hadn't turned those two down in favour of that. Minty Fresh. I mean, at least the character customization is in-game. At least you don't have to buy it fucking separate, which these days that really shouldn't be the standard. But yeah, it turns out I had a really good colour to begin with, then got another all-right colour, uh, and then just got what they call Minty Fresh, but what I call baby shit green. Anyway, here's a, a little bit of sauce boofery, which always goes over nicely with me. Um, this is part of the Murder on the Owl Express. Uh, I've got some more footage of it, which I guess I'll just use for B-roll now, but uh, this was obviously my favourite part of it because it was full on saw. Um, you have to name a lot of things uh, before the level begins. There are these shifty crows, the ones I'm hiding from here in the stealth sections. And they ask you a lot of personal details, like, uh, you know, yeah a body part you're ashamed of, your pet's pet, that's this bit here, your pet's pet. Um, I named everything Chungus, except for one character which I misspelled as Chungus, and that was the one that was most heavily involved in this level, so I spent the whole level dealing with a Chungus instead of a Chungus, and that got really upsetting to me, it was very upsetting to me. Not quite as upsetting as Minty Fresh. Minty Fresh is very upsetting to me. Okay, um, it's baby shit green. It's not minty fresh. Um, I'm not a fan of minty fresh. I'm sorry. I, I like minty fresh as a flavour. I like minty things. Who doesn't? But not as a style of clothing. And that's ultimately my takeaway of a hat in time. It's a pretty good game. Uh, it's not going to get any best of the year awards from yours truly. But if you like platformers and you like having a little bit of fun, and you like seeing some inventive stuff, like they're, 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 they play around with their concepts, just collecting evidence off the dog, um, but if you like all that, then yeah, pick it up, you'll have a good laugh. <laughs>